You're listening to Tim Bolkley's Five Minute Bible, the Book of Isaiah and Imperial Contexts. The Book of Isaiah comes in several fairly clearly demarcated sections, as we've seen. And since Jewish scholars a thousand years ago at least, careful readers have regularly noticed at least one big change in the contexts addressed by the book. That most obvious change occurs between chapter 39 and chapter 40. Through chapters 1 to 39, in almost every passage, if there is an imperial context in view, the empire is Assyria, and many of the speeches threaten that Assyria as God's agent will invade Judah and take Judeans, or at least the elite of, Ju of Jerusalem, into exile. The dominant message in these chapters is warning, and the tone is accusing. Assyria is mentioned by name forty-three times from chapter 7 to chapter 38, with Nineveh also mentioned, whereas in chapters 40 to 66 there is only one mention of Assyria, by contrast Babylon is mentioned four times in chapter 39, and four in chapter 40 to 55. So by contrast with chapter 1 to 39 where the imperial context seems to be the expanding empire of Assyria which is threatening but has not yet taken complete control of Judah. In chapter 40 and following the imperial context when it's mentioned is either Babylon with Judeans being exiles there or Persia with Cyrus acting as God's agent to return the exiles to Jerusalem and the dominant message is comfort and redemption at least up to chapter 56 where there may be another change as we'll see chapter 39 ends the first section with the threat of Assyrian conquest postponed but an exile in Babylon foretold chapter 39 beginning at verse 5 then Isaiah said to Hezekiah hear the word of the Lord of hosts days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your ancestors have stored up until this day shall be carried to Babylon and nothing shall be left says the Lord some of your own sons who are born to you shall be taken away and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon then Hezekiah said to Isaiah the word of the Lord that you have spoken is good for he thought there will be peace and security in my days and on that ominous note the first section of the book ends in chapter 40 to 55 it seems that Judeans have little authority and the main interest in these chapters is in how God's sovereign power will redeem them from exile and restore Jerusalem's children it's signaled in the opening verses comfort O oh comfort my people says your God and in this section of the book it seems that any punishment that was due has fallen by and large see verse 2 of chapter 40 already and yet as you read on when you get to chapter 56 the focus seems to change again and issues of governance become again important justice right worship and community unity and other concerns appropriate to a time during the Persian period perhaps when Judah Yehud was a region within the Empire with some measure of local authority so we've got a book which falls clearly into a number of sections and the last two of these sections seem to be addressing people in a different imperial setting from the imperial setting supposed by most of the first 39 chapters in chapters 1 to 39 the dominant context is the expanding Assyrian Empire and God's use of that empire to punish Judah and warn Judah in chapters 40 to 55 this punishment seems to have already fallen and the dominant concern is that Judean exiles will return to Jerusalem through God's agent Cyrus king of Persia whereas in chapters 56 to 66 the interest seems to have changed again to a people struggling to make a life in the land but perhaps during a period when they don't have total authority that's the story behind the Deutero and Trito second and third Isaiahs that you'll read about in the books bye for now <laughs>